One of the big questions that I've had since the launch of the Starlink Mini, which you see behind me, is whether or not it can handle snow, rain, and other types of weather. So we know that Starlinks have snow melt mode, which increases the power output to the antenna, which generates heat and can melt snow and ice to prevent it from accumulating on the dish. And that helps prevent outages due to weather, because if you have snow or ice that builds up on the dish, that can block the satellite signals. We have a snowstorm that's about to come in, so I thought it'd be a good opportunity to test the mini versus the standard dish and see which one performs better in the snow or if the lower total power output of the mini has any effect on its reliability in weather. So I've set both of them up here. We've got the mini on the right and the Starlink Gen 3 standard dish on the left in the middle of my yard. And luckily I've got a snowstorm coming in. So in Missouri, we don't get a lot of snow, but it's expected to be around four to eight inches of accumulation, which is a pretty good snowfall for this area. And basically what we'll do is as we go through the storm and the snow is falling, I'll be checking on the Starlink app to see the amount of outages and obstructions that occur as a result of the snow. And also to see if any snow does end up accumulating on the Starlink mini dish, which has an overall lower power supply. So this one is capable of putting out just about 60 watts. Compare that to the standard dish, which has a much higher total output from its power supply. I think it can go anywhere from 100 watts to maybe up toward 150 watts or more if you have snow melt on. Also, I wanted to mention that I've got the snow melt setting on both of these dishes on automatic, so I'm not gonna be using preheat or anything like that, just the standard automatic profile that should handle ice and snow automatically. So which one will win in a snowstorm? We're about to find out. Wow guys, what a storm that ended up being. So the original forecasts were calling for between four and eight inches, but we actually got 11 inches officially and blizzard conditions throughout the day during that storm. And to put that in perspective for my area, this was the fourth largest single day snowfall on record. And as you can see here, we've got our X frame bases that they were, these were on are just buried but I'll roll in some footage from around my property just to show you some of the uh, snow drifts and things that were occurring. So out you know, in an open field like this, the wind was able to uh, clear off a lot of the, the snow that would end up accumulating. And I think that helped us out a little bit as far as the, the Starlink units went. So initially, just to give you a kind of a timeline of this storm, what ended up happening was into the night and into the early hours in the morning on the day of the storm, we had some freezing rain and sleet, had a thin glaze of ice on the roads and everything like that early on, which wreaked havoc on the roadways, but didn't affect Sterling too much. I didn't have any outages at all in the beginning stages with the, with the ice and the sleet and the flurries that were happening. So perfect reliability there out of the, out of both the mini and the standard Starlink. And then as we moved into the morning hours of the day of the storm, we had that snow roll in and it would snow for around 12 hours. So um, off and on, you know, heavy snow and then lighter snow. And what was really impressive was that there were absolutely no outages longer than two seconds for either of these, di either of these dishes. And that was for the entire storm. So perfect reliability, almost. So Starlink, when you go to the outages tab in the app, they show you by default the outages greater or two seconds or greater. And that's kind of a, a, a real interruption that you would notice during activities. If you switch that to the less than two seconds, you get to what I call the micro outages. And that's kind of where we see, we saw some of the interruptions occurring. So 
both of the dishes had some of those micro outages. Some of them were due to obstructions from this, you know, large tree that it was kind of, it was, I think the tip of the tree was kind of in the field of view of the starlings. Didn't cause too many issues, but that's why you see the obstructed uh, outages. Then we had some network issues, which are out of our control. That's issues with the Starlink network itself. But the real story was some of those no signal received outages. And that tells you that's from the weather. So Starlink was having trouble communicating to the satellites. It didn't know what to attribute that to because it wasn't an obstruction that it was seeing consistently. It was just a no signal received. And that just created a few micro outages. What I did see was that the mini had more of those micro outages over this storm versus the standard. But overall, if you look at just the reliability and looking at the ping percentage of both dishes, the mini came in at an average of 99.7 to 99.8% through that entire storm overall. Standard was slightly higher at around 99.9% reliability, which is incredible to think about going through a 12 hour storm, blizzard conditions, 11 inches of snowfall, and virtually no interruptions whatsoever. One of the interesting things that I noticed also was that heating mode never turned on between any of these dishes, either the, the mini or the standard here. So heating mode is when the Starlink sends extra power to the antenna to create more heat to melt off snow and ice or whatever is causing issues. But the thing is with Starlink, it doesn't have a dedicated heater in the antenna. All it can do is look at the signal to noise ratio and if it sees a degradation in the signal to noise ratio, it just automatically ramps up power to try to compensate for that. So your Starlink doesn't know that it's raining or snowing or whatever. It just sees that reduced signal to noise ratio and can increase power to compensate. But neither of these dishes had to do that, which was fairly impressive. Um, that just kind of means that this had a lot more to give. You know, if it were to snow heavier or ice heavier or a different kind of snow we could have seen you know the same type of reliability because we weren't even pushing either of these units to their limits as far as power consumption goes i didn't really notice a difference uh, from snow versus non-snow so i typically see around 20 watts or so average on the mini and around 40 watts on the standard that's according to the starlink app that's not the overall power usage but that's the antenna power usage for both of these and that didn't really increase you can see by the screenshots that i'm pulling up is you know, we had around 20 watts for the mini and around 40 watts for the standard. And I think that's mainly due to it didn't have to turn on heating mode. If heating mode were to have been activated on either of these dishes, you would have seen those average power numbers go way up. I think another thing that helped me with my test specifically in this location was that we had very icy, um, almost dry, if you will, snow. So in other areas, you might get some snow that is a lot wetter stickier and thicker and this one these are just kind of fluffy and lightweight so especially with those blizzard conditions and the wind a lot of that snow accumulation was prevented from happening on the dish itself because the the wind would just blow simply blow any snow off of the dish so overall in this test the mini totally blew away my expectations i thought that for sure that i would see less reliability out of the mini compared to the standard dish and that I would have outages and potentially snow accumulation on the dish itself because of the lack of power from its power supply. But it totally proved me wrong, and I think I can confidently recommend the Mini now for even winter climates where you might get snow. Although the Mini had more micro outages over the course of this storm, it was still over 99% reliable in terms of ping status, and I had no outages over the course of this entire storm on either dish that you would notice in the real world. So in the battle of Starlink Mini versus a Blizzard, I definitely think Starlink wins here. That's not gonna be the case for every type of storm and every type of snow, but at least in my case, the Mini did a great job. I think that about does it for this test. I'm gonna go get inside where it's warm, but if you have any questions or stories about using Starlink in the snow of your own, be sure to let me know in the comments below. Always appreciate you watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this type of video. Like the video if you thought this was entertaining or at least informative, and we'll see you in the next video.